Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are going to go out in search of some terracotta, or, well, at least I know where terracotta is. It's just that it's a very, very long way away, and we have a desert that I can go to with a nearby Badlands, which is a little bit closer, but it's honestly pretty small. What I want is an easy route out to the Mesa that we found, the really big eroded Badlands biome and a few other plateau biomes around there that are going to provide terracotta for the foreseeable future. It's going to be our main source of terracotta throughout the series, and as we now know, I need a bit more terracotta for decoration around things like our copper, aging factory, and all sorts of other projects besides. So one of the things I need to do is set up a permanent route out to a mesa biome. It's actually about 8,000 blocks west and 6,000 blocks south or thereabouts, so it's really not a short distance to travel, which of course we would want to do through the nether, but even in the nether, that sort of distance provides a bit of a challenge. 8,000 blocks in the overworld is still a thousand blocks in the nether. Quite some distance to travel. And of course, you'd expect that I could probably do that with Elytra. But in some cases, Elytra travel through the nether can be a tricky affair. The nether terrain gets a little bit dense, especially around crimson forests and similar biomes like this. And it's kind of difficult to weave a path out there and get it right every single time. Traveling a thousand blocks by Elytra is still quite a distance, not to mention the cost of fireworks. I've been going back and forth through my nether hub on foot for a little while, avoiding the attacks of the piglins when I'm not wearing my gold armor, and the hoglins kind of get in the way occasionally. Frankly, it's getting a little bit irritating, and I could work a little bit more on the structure of the nether hub and slabbing everything and whatnot, but that still doesn't solve the problem of how I get much further out in the nether in a short period of time. So today we're going to head out in search of a different biome which is going to provide the materials we need to make a fast transport method through the nether which we haven't explored yet in the series but I think it's probably time to give it a go. We're going to make a return to the frozen ocean biomes to grab all three kinds of ice but specifically blue ice is the one we're going to use. And here we are a frozen ocean swims into view adjacent to the cold biomes that we are familiar with around here and I think I might actually set up a nether portal over here while I think about it because we are going to need to return to locations like this for stuff that we want to cover in future. But right here by this village is a perfect illustration of what I am after. A lot of the time in mountain biomes, in frozen peaks, you will see this block here which is packed ice. What we're after is this block here, which is blue ice. The difference is subtle, but it is there. Naturally, in order to obtain these blocks at all, we will need to use silk touch. So I'm gonna grab a couple of blocks of this, make sure that that is blue ice. Yep, certainly is, okay. And while we're here, we might as well discuss the difference. Each of the different ice blocks has a little bit more slipperiness to it. Basically, if you're traveling on regular ice, then you'll get a little bit of extra momentum, but you'll slow down pretty fast. If you are traveling on blue ice on the other hand you have a lot of extra momentum added to your movement or at least the friction of the block does not take away any momentum but packed ice is sort of in between the two and is the one that we can probably find in larger quantities however if we want maximum speed for our fast travel method through the nether we want to get hold of some more blue ice and that's going to mean seeking it out in the more condensed areas of icebergs like this one or going out into the ocean where a frozen ocean is going to have a lot more icebergs that are purely made out of blue ice. Aside from its appearance, one of the main things you can use to determine whether something is packed ice or blue ice is can you instamine it? Because packed ice can be very easily instamined with an efficiency pickaxe, especially at the level like of netherite or diamond. While unfortunately, blue ice has to be gathered a little bit slower. Although I don't know if haste will have any impact on that if you're lucky enough to find a large enough section of blue ice that it's worth setting up a beacon in the first place. But around the corner in this frozen an ocean we have more what I'm looking for as we can see there are a couple of mounds of blue ice here there are these smaller chunkier icebergs that will generate every so often and they will have exclusively blue ice in them give or take maybe a cap of packed ice here and there so this is going to be a lot easier for us to take down blue ice in bulk and hopefully we'll be able to bring enough back that we can create a road through the nether made of blue ice so remember how in previous videos we've been boating around on the frozen oceans and frozen rivers and this is actually a pretty fast way to travel once you pick up a little bit of speed? Well it turns out that the ice here is only the beginning of that and if you look at the packed ice or blue ice blocks, the slipperiness level that they provide is actually enough to get your boat travelling at 
enormously high speeds. Moreover, the packed ice and blue ice have the advantage that they won't melt in any light level, meaning that even if there are fires or lights that we want to set up in the nether, we don't have to worry about the ice melting in the nether and evaporating when it turns into water. So blue ice and packed ice really become ideal blocks to use to lay out roads in the nether that we can use for faster transport. And I'm going to break down a couple of the ender chests that I brought with me just so I can set up a nether portal here at this ice village. And from here, I think we might be able to make a tunnel back towards my spawn point in the nether. But just in case this ends up going south, I'm going to put all of the packed ice and stuff into the ender chest because this block is pretty valuable and the only other place you can get it is from the wandering trader, which is a much less reliable source. He'll only sell you about six blocks at a time. It's really not all that worth it. You'll also occasionally Occasionally find houses in these villages which are made partly of blue ice, so if you feel like raiding these and taking their stuff and taking down the house along with it, then you could always give that option a try. Alright, let's head on through to the nether and see where we end up. And we're in a soul sand valley, having a screenshot of the coordinates helps of course, we're really not that far away. <laughs> At exactly 666 on the x-axis, how appropriate. I think from here, for our own safety, one of the things we're going to do is relocate this portal up into the ceiling of the nether, because that's going to allow us to more or less tunnel directly towards our location without having to worry too much about making tunnels, building bridges, and all of the dangerous stuff that comes with navigating the nether. So I think the first step is going to be to move this portal up to about Y 110-ish, and that should give us enough headroom and enough floor below our feet that we can create a tunnel up there without any other concerns. And so having pillared up here into the ceiling of the nether and boxed ourselves in, we're at Y110, now it's just a matter of travelling back towards our spawn location and finding a way down. Although on the way we're going to be digging out a 3x3 three three tunnel like this, and that for the sake of symmetry <laughs> might have me rebuilding the nether portal so it matches the dimensions of the tunnel. So that portal links up perfectly fine, and in the floor here is where we're going to start laying down a path of blue ice, alternating every other block. So we're going to place a piece here, and then here, and then here, and then here. We'll leave a little bit of a gap in front of the portal, and we're going to be placing this on alternate blocks. On top of each of these blue ice blocks, we are going to be placing some wooden buttons as well, because we want to make sure these blocks aren't spawnable. Otherwise, as solid blocks, they could very easily spawn zombie pigmen or something up here that are going to disrupt our boat road here through the nether. And naturally, while the rest of the netherrack blocks around here are going to be just as spawnable, we'll come back through here and spawn proof these, either with buttons or slabs or whatever we feel like using. And with a decent chunk of this ice road already built, I can show you how this works. So we're going to place a boat on top of there, and as long as we're facing in the right direction, we can just hold the forward button and we start building up a whole lot of speed. We can move down this tunnel incredibly quickly. Not only that, but if we run into the walls at either side, we're still kind of... Oh, <laughs> the boat's just gone through the portal. Even if we run into the walls on the side, the hitbox of the boat is large enough that we don't fall down onto the blocks at either side, allowing us to hug the walls here, and meaning that even if we turn slightly to one side or the other, we're not going to lose control and momentum of the boat. Naturally, we will have to worry about areas like this where the ceiling thins out a bit, and if you're at all concerned about lava coming in through the walls, then you might want to bring some fire resistance potions with you when you do this, but you don't need to worry about the lava melting the ice blocks, so at least there's that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can do this with packed ice as well. And of course, blue ice being a relatively expensive block, whereas packed ice is much more abundant and easier to gather, you might want to use a mix of the two in your tunnels. But blue ice, if it's exclusively blue ice along a road like this, will allow you to travel at a top speed of about 72 blocks per second, whereas packed ice only does about 40 blocks per second. So honestly, you're going to be almost twice as fast if you're using blue ice for the majority of this. If you alternate packed ice and blue ice, I'm not sure if that lessens your momentum or not, but either way, it's it should be a pretty decent compromise if you don't want to spend this much blue ice on a project. The other thing is to make sure that these paths are straight, because frankly, turning in boats is a bit of a nightmare when you're traveling at these kinds of speeds. The boat has too much inertia and will continue traveling forwards even when you want it to go sideways. Also, banging off the walls if you've got like diagonals and stuff coming through a tunnel like this, your boat's just going to get caught on every block as you travel around a corner. It's just not worth doing. Personally, the only way I like to do corners on these boat roads, because obviously we'll have to travel a couple of hundred blocks in a different direction, is to just hit a corner, turn 90 degrees to one way or the other, and keep going in that direction. So make sure the corners are just straight right angles as opposed to slow bending curves, unless you have enough of an idea of where the 
path goes in the nether, that you can build a curve as though it's like a part of a racetrack, like a bend in a track as opposed to like a walking path through the nether where you'd go at a diagonal like this. Anyway, it looks like we'll need a little bit more spruce from the village if we're going to spawn proof the remainder of these blue ice blocks. So I'm going to head back through to the overworld. We're going to grab some more resources and I'll see you folks on the other side when we're back at spawn with our ice boat road all the way there. And a couple of hours and a couple of cups of tea later, we have ourselves an ice boat road that goes all the way from that frozen biome to a corner which should be coming up any second now gosh it's a long way if we turn that way or oh, we just about made it around the corner and just a short jaunt in this direction we should find ourselves at the terminus right here and this is going to lead down to the nether hub so i've got myself a ladder set up walled this whole thing in because there's crimson forest all around us and i didn't want the piglins getting inside of here but we should just be able to fill out a couple of light fixtures in here to make sure it stays nice and bright and we come down here directly in between the portals to my storage room and to the geode right by my starter house. So I think that's a pretty neat setup, and if I can dodge the occasional blaze fireballs coming from the fortress down here, I think we need to expand our brand new ice boat road towards the intended destination that we had from the beginning. We need to head out in search of that Badlands biome. And I think we're going to do that by digging to what I would think would be the coordinates in the nether. If I do some rough calculations and figure out roughly where we're supposed to be, even though I haven't made a portal at the Badlands yet, we can probably take the coordinates, divide them by eight, make a portal in the nether, and since we're quite high up in the world right now, we're at 109, 110-ish, if that's where we make our portal, then chances are our portal will generate on the surface in that Badlands biome. But that does mean a thousand block long tunnel and then another a probably 800 or so block long tunnel so in the meantime I think I need to repair my pickaxe so I'm going to take a quick trip to the end and when we come back we should hopefully have dug that tunnel and located the position for our new portal. Well my friends we are back and we are ready to give this a go and I've just spent the last little while meticulously slabbing every area that we just set up for these ice boat roads and it took a little bit of time to dig out the one all the way out to where I think the Badlands biome is going to be because it went through a basalt delta. <laughs> There's a lot of basalt and blackstone around which makes it very difficult to mine on through and of course we couldn't bring a beacon with us because we were traveling you know distances of about 500 blocks which is well outside the radius of a beacon not to mention even though we're in proximity to the nether ceiling it's kind of a pain to set up a beacon in the nether to begin with and so up here at the top of the ladder we have two separate ice roads this one with the warped wood slabs takes us out to the cold biome and this one with the crimson wood slabs takes us out to the hot biome i think i'd color code these probably to make them a little bit more recognizable and now we are going to make the trip all the way out to the badlands biome and i'm going to enable the coordinates hud one more time if we just do a quick trigger ch toggle there we go so you can see how fast the coordinates move once we pick up a bit of speed this is not all blue ice some of this is packed ice as we get a little bit further in but it's blue ice on either end and here we go <laughs> there's so much speed oh we just passed some ancient debris which i need to mine on the way back we're already through the soul sand valley we're coming out the other side into the nether wastes biome and as we turn the corner coming up on our left here there it is okay we should be headed whoa <laughs> oversteered a little bit there we should be headed towards the basalt delta and there it is as the fog changes color is pretty much the only way you can tell which biome you're in we're on packed ice here for a second and then we should hit the blue ice again once we come out the other side of the basalt delta and we are away yes there we go and finally we come to rest right here in a nether portal frame and that did not take very long at all considering we've just traveled about a thousand blocks that way and 700 blocks this way now one thing i do want to go back quickly and note aside from the ancient debris like i said we're going to pick that up a little bit later is the fact that once we reach the basalt delta here we needed to be a lot less worried about spawn proofing i cut off the slabs a little bit further back these buttons here are all just there because i was placing them at the time but then i realized the only mobs that spawn in a basalt delta are magma cubes and magma cubes much like the slimes that we were studying in the slime farm build need a three by three by two and a bit 
height in order to spawn. And in this case, they're only getting two blocks worth of height and they don't have the three by three area at any kind of spawnable height for them. Even the small ones won't spawn in here because it checks for the room of a large magma cube. And yes, occasionally I did end up placing two blocks side by side instead of spacing them out this way, but it worked out in the long run. But when you're going through a basalt delta with something like this, as long as you keep the ceiling only two blocks high off of the floor of ice, which should be perfectly fine for you to travel down on a boat, you don't need to worry about spawn proofing these areas the same way you do with the other biomes. But once you get into crimson forest or nether waste, even the warped forest if you end up going through one. I do recommend putting down slabs and buttons on the packed ice just to make sure you don't get any piglins or anything spawning in here and messing with you because one mob can basically get you stuck in here and if you're not wearing any gold armor like I currently am not, you're probably going to get attacked by the piglins who spot you and decide to mess with you while you're in the boat. So the last thing I need to do is make good on my theory about this nether portal and whether or not it will transport us to the surface in the badlands biome that we wanted to go to in the overworld. We're at Y108 right now. The coordinates match the coordinates that we need to come out in the overworld. If we multiply those by eight, we should end up in the Badlands biome. Let's cross our fingers and see if we've done it. And we have, look at that, right on the edge, it turns out, of the eroded Badlands, right next to this little inland desert. And we got the subspace bubble challenge for traveling seven kilometers in the nether. There we go, folks. We got that advancement in style. Very happy that we now have a means to get out here nice and easily. And I think we're probably going to use this opportunity to gather a bit of terracotta while we're here. Although it is a little slow gathering terracotta without a beacon, so I think I'll probably come back with a haste beacon and we can do a little bit of strip mining out here in the mesa to get some of that regular old raw terracotta that we can dye to turn it into all of the terracotta variants. We have one last thing to attend to on our way back from the Badlands, and if I get out at just the right time, we should end up more or less where we need to be. And up, oh, there we go, <laughs> right next to the ancient debris, because yes, veins of ancient debris can generate up near the roof of the nether. In fact, a single vein of ancient debris can be found anywhere above lava lakes in basically every chunk. There's like a bonus vein, more or less. So this is one of those, and we're going to bring that home with us, because I think this might even be enough ancient debris to get us another ingot of netherite. Hey, it sure is. We have two netherite scrap right here and two ancient debris. So let me go and grab... A couple more gold ingots from here, and we should be able to cook this up and get ourselves another netherite ingot. And I think we can all see which one of these tools is due for an upgrade to netherite. Yep, it is netherite shovel time, folks. And now we can finally give this one a name, and it will, of course, be the Queen of Spades. <laughs> and shout out to everybody in the comments who saw that one coming. All right, folks, that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I have had a blast. In this episode, we finally managed to get some more permanent ice boat roads out to the further biomes in the world and we got an advancement out of it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixlorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.